Let's go to the phone right now and bring in a guy who since around 1990 has collected at Major League Stadiums 8,172 baseballs, most of them hit into the stands that he has chased down. And there they are behind He's you. done it at 51 different stadiums, and he scored big last week. He was at Yankee Stadium when Alex Rodriguez knocked out a homer for his 3,000th hit. He finally found the golden ticket, the golden baseball, as Woody likes to call it, the Powerball. His name is Zach Hampel. Zach, welcome to the show. Thank you, guys. It's great to be with you. And as you can hear, I'm starting to lose my voice a little bit from all the interviews and the lack of sleep and just the, the craziness that has taken over my life in the last few days. You know, once you sell that baseball, you can afford the best ear, nose, and throat doctors in the country, probably, Zach. Zach, everybody's wondering, what have you decided to do with the baseball? Uh, I still haven't made a, an, an ultimate decision. At first, I was sure that I was going to keep it. The Yankees offered me a, a whole bunch of stuff, very generous, uh, amazing things, really. But the way I thought was uh, nothing they could possibly offer would be worth more than the ball was to me. Uh, but after having some conversations with them and talking to them more about what I do and mentioning my favorite charity, a children's charity called Pitch In for Baseball, uh, which provides equipment to kids all over the world, uh, the Yankees mentioned that they might be able to make a sizable donation to the charity um, in addition to everything else that they offered. And that's really the first time that uh, the wheels started cranking. And I thought maybe there is a way after all that they and A-Rod can get the ball back. Zach, this Woody, and, and we talked about you at length on Around the Horn the other day on ESPN. And, and, and I'll go through a few things quickly. Uh, Tim Kalashaw didn't believe you had 8,000 balls but we can see on our 70 inch tv here that stack and that looks like it's looks like one of the great pyramids in egypt so i assume that uh, and for people who don't know if, if i'm correct you do go to all these stadiums 51 and you go for batting practice and during batting practice when i was a kid you could pick up five or six balls sure. if you were there early on is is that a fair assumption of how you got most of these balls Absolutely. The, uh, the 8,000 plus balls, that includes everything, batting practice, other warm-ups, but it does also include 159 foul balls during games, 32 home runs, and one ground rule double. And uh, yeah, you can definitely pile up the numbers during BP. My one game record happened in Cincinnati a few years ago. That was 36. So I make sure to bring a backpack. And uh, of course, I also give away a lot of balls to kids, usually one or two or three every day. Uh, on that day in Cincinnati, I think I gave away 10 or 11. So the more I get, the more I give away. I, I just try not to be a total jerk in the process of doing this. Yeah, you're sort of the Robin Hood of baseball. You steal from the rich owners and give to the poor kids who want a souvenir. What is, I'm sure you've been asked this, forgive us, we're going to try and come up with a couple you haven't been asked, but what is the number two ball that you have? What is the second most important ball? There was one that I caught in 2011, which was kind of a big deal at the time. Uh, it was a player's first career home run, but he was 19 years old and only batting 179. But uh, a few years later, it turned into a really big deal because that was Mike Trout's first career home run. So wow. I, Whoa. I, I, yeah, I, I'd go with that one. Yeah. yeah, hold on to that one. Uh, any from... Yeah. Uh, in wait, the, wait, wait, wait. I want to know who the ground... You said one ground rule double, right? Uh, that's right. Who was it? Who was the ground rule double? <clears throat> Well, first, let me just say that uh, I gave Mike Trout's first home run ball back to him after the game. Oh, well, that's nice. No, no questions asked other than to simply be the person to hand it to him myself. Um, but as for the ground rule double, I got that in Toronto. It was hit by David Justice in right field. Oh, pretty good player. Yeah. Uh, have you been to Coors Field and how many balls you got from right here in Denver? Yeah, I've, uh, I've been to all 30 current stadiums. And uh, and another, you know, a whole bunch that have closed down, and, and even places like uh, I was at the Sydney Cricket Ground last year when Major League Baseball opened the season in Australia, and I was at the Tokyo Dome in 2012. So yeah, I have all the stadiums covered, and uh, I'm ready for the new Atlanta Braves Stadium to open up in a few years. But um, as far as Coors Field, just pulling up the stats right here on my computer, <laughs> I've been to 18 lifetime games at Coors Field and snagged a total of 102 balls, including four foul balls during games. 
So would you, uh, if Coors Field, as you well know, and you're an expert, you've been to all the stadiums, Coors Field is known because of the altitude as Cape Canaveral of baseball. What is the best stadium for batting practice? Chasing down foul balls, yeah. yeah. A lot of people assume that it would be Coors because the balls fly out of there. But here's my sort of weird theory on that. Because balls go so far, there's a much larger range that they can land out in the bleachers. So, you know, a ball can land 20 rows back in the bleachers or it could barely be a wall scraper. You just don't know. You can't really narrow it down to one hot spot. Uh. So the stadium where it's farther to the outfield walls, where it's like they're barely going to reach the outfield wall, it's like that's kind of the one limited place where they're going to land. So it's, it's weird. The bigger ballparks can be easier in that way, but... Where I sit at Yankee Stadium, it's only 359 feet to the outfield wall where I, where I sit in the right field. So a lot of balls that would be deep flyouts in most stadiums land several rows deep in my section. So I have a lot of opportunities there. I would say probably the single best spot to catch a home run in the major leagues is uh, sitting right next to that grassy hill in Burnham in Arlington because fans are allowed to run out there and oh. chase home run balls. And really, <laughs> it's all about having room to maneuver. If you're trapped in the middle of a long row, you pretty much have no chance. But if you have a standing room section or an aisle, like there is pretty much throughout all of left and center field at Coors Field right behind the wall, uh, if you have some range to run left and right, that increases the chances incredibly. He's Zach Hampel. He collects baseballs. And this segment was presented by the Celtic Tavern. Tell you more about them in just a second. Uh, Zach, out, all right, so you got the Mike Trout first home run ball. You got the A Rod 3000 well, three, three, so three, so three hit. Is there one particular ball, one particular memento that you hold near and dear to your heart, one that we might never think of? Yeah, there is. Um, I caught the last home run that the Mets ever hit at Shea Stadium. Oh, wow. I, I still have that one. I was actually surprised that the Mets never approached me to try to get the ball back. Um, if they had, I there's a good chance I would have told them to forget it. Um, forget? No, 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 no. Zach, you don't say forget it. In New York, you say forget about it. <laughs> no, well, yeah, there's right. that. But, uh, <laughs> I, I had gone to hundreds of games at Shea Stadium as a kid, but I hardly ever sat in the outfield. The, I don't know if you you know can picture the outfield sure. layout, but yeah. there were just a couple of teeny little sections that extended yeah. out past yeah. the outfield, and those were in the second deck. So there was very limited, you know, a very limited area to catch home runs, and the bleachers were often closed altogether because there just weren't enough fans to make it worth opening. So I pretty much just went for foul balls my whole life at Shea Stadium, and that that uh, Carlos Beltran homer, the last net homer at Shea, was the first. And only home run I ever caught there in hundreds of games. I, I could I could ask questions of you all day long, and 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 I there's so many to ask. But let me go back to the A Rod ball for a second. I, I said on ESPN, and I wonder if this is an offer that I can negotiate for the other side. Uh, if A Rod, who's made, would we guess three hundred million dollars in his career, came and came and said to you, I will donate. $500,000 to your favorite charity, which you've mentioned, and I will give you $500,000. Would you take that? Uh, I would strongly have to consider that, although I can't imagine that uh, that much money will be involved. I'm hearing estimates that this baseball is worth anywhere from $50,000, which seems awfully low to me, up yeah. to half a million dollars, which seems more like it. And sure, people are saying, oh, there's all this controversy surrounding A-Rod, and that brings the value of the ball down. Here's the way I see it. There have been three home runs hit on a 3,000 hit in the history of baseball. Wade Boggs and Derek Jeter were the first two, and both of those fans gave the ball back to those players. So what I have in my possession is the only 3,000 hit baseball in history. Controversy or no controversy, you're telling me that that's not an extremely valuable item? So that, that's the way I'm thinking of it. And yet, you know, despite all of that, I'm not looking to get rich here. I'm not necessarily determined to pad my bank account. Uh, when I first got it, I thought I would just keep the damn thing because it's so meaningful to me. But now I realize that as much as I would like to hang on to it, I feel like this baseball is bigger than one person. 
you know, and so I'm thinking of how I can use it to do some good for the world. That's what I said. I I'm, I'm, uh, been, yeah. I'm going to be your agent. $500,000 <laughs> to that ch- mention he the wants, name He wants a 10% event. cut, though, Zach. Yeah. That's the problem. No, I don't want to do it. Yeah, a lot of people have been well, offering what to What is the, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to do that. But uh, what was the name of the charity hitting? It's called baseball. Pitch In for Baseball. And, uh, yeah, they, they provide baseball and softball equipment to underprivileged kids all over the world in very, very poverty-stricken areas and, and other communities that have been hit by natural disasters. Yeah, where well, the Yankees. The leagues will have yeah. the equipment shed wiped out, and, and this charity helps get the kids back well, on the board. Well, it might be. Great yeah, thing. it might be really good for. I mean, he's trying to repair his image this year. We, we all know the Rod story that if he donated $500,000 to that charity and then he gave you $500,000 $500, for the ball. That's where I'm going. If I'm with, if I'm with you, Zach. Who are you spending that's, A-Rod's money? That's where I, I, well, A-Rod's got all the money in the world. Zach, you, what did the Yankees originally offer you for the ball? Oh, the best well, part of this is... I was whisked away from the right field seats by a gentleman named Eddie Fastook, who's the executive director of team security. I mean, he has more clout inside Yankee Stadium than just about anyone. And we went down to his office in the base of the Yankee Stadium. You know, it got really quiet when the elevator opened and there's blank cinder block walls in the parking garage and I'm thinking like, oh boy, this is where the Yankees make people disappear. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, Be buried under the really stadium. Nice chat. We had a great chat. He could not have been friendlier and more respectful and he just basically said that if I give the ball back, I'd, I'd be able to meet Alex Rodriguez, Ooh. have my own press conference at Yankee Stadium, Ooh. get interviewed on the, Net, uh, the Yes Network during the game. I would receive all kinds of tickets, including the fancy legend tickets, you know, where there's free steak and lobster and all that stuff, and get uh, <laughs> all kinds of signed memorabilia, bats, balls, jerseys. And, and on top of that, he said, you know, and what are, what are you interested in? And I just told him, you know, thank you, but no thank you. There's really nothing you can offer that's more valuable to me than the ball itself. Good for, and, good um, for you. Good for you. Yeah. The one part that bothered me was they said they would put you on Yes Network with Michael K, and I went, "That's not worth it." <laughs> Zach, hey, I'm a I'm a huge fan of Michael K. I've always wanted to meet him. So that is definitely enticing. Zach, uh, do you work for a living? I do. Um, <clears throat> I've written three baseball books. Um, Watching Baseball Smarter is the one that I think most people have heard of. But uh, I also work at my family's bookstore here in New York City, which is called Argosy. And uh, I catalog autographs there, like very old historical documents and manuscripts. And I, I archive them and photograph and scan them from the website. It's a, a store that my grandfather started in 1925. And it's a pretty fascinating place, six stories. And ah. the best part about working for family is that my schedule is flexible. So yeah. when I tell them that I got to take off at 4 o'clock to jump on the floor train and head up to Yankee Stadium, well, I don't get paid for the last two hours of the day, but you know nobody has any problem with that. Yeah. What? Uh, where's the bookstore located? I, w- I lived in New York several years, and and I love to wander to bookstores. Where Where is Odyssey? It's uh, it's Argosy. A R G O S Y. Argosy. Yeah, Argosy. It's uh, on East 59th Street. It's right near Bloomingdale's. And uh, it sure. would be great to have a visit from you someday. So yeah, I, I lived uh, I lived on West 59th, right around. Uh, uh, Lincoln Center and Central Park. Woody, so, will, Woody will sign the A-Rod baseball for you if you'd like. <laughs> I'll think about that along with all the other ridiculous offers coming out. <laughs> Zach, we really appreciate your time and uh, and the fact you have done a number of interviews this week and you're losing your voice. We hope you get it back soon. And uh, good luck with whatever you decide to do with the baseball. You're, you're a delight. Thank you. Guys, thanks so much for the chance to uh, tell the story. Thank you, Zach.